Atlanta's number one hip hop station and home for the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Hot 27 I'm Miss Shanika right here. Got a very special guest in the studio, <laughs> Miss Rhapsody. What's happening, sir? What is going on? That is what my friends call me. What? Yeah, Come you on, know. You know the sisters, though. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I am so very happy to meet you. I've heard some wonderful things about you, you know, in this music industry for a few years now, and it's definitely a, pl- a pleasure to finally meet you. Oh, man, you. I'm happy to be here and meet you in this red hat. Let me get it. Okay. No, look at those <laughs> earrings. We can train now. Oh, okay, then. Okay, then. I'm about that life. <laughs> I Thank haven't seen you. those now. These, these are actually the uh, Mary J. Blige and Simone collection. Yeah, really? yes, look yes. at you! You up there merchandising on that black woman? Everything over here. You better <laughs> get it, girl. All right, so let's let's play catch up because okay. you've had a lot of things going on in yeah. a lot of years. Okay, <laughs> this album, this Eve is by your man. Thank you. Thank wow. you. Wow. Yes. What gave you the idea to name each of your songs after dope women? Mm-hmm. I did an uh, interview. I got to give it to this guy. He came down from Mississippi to interview me for this Oxford and um, article. And what he was doing was doing the genealogy and family tree of North Carolina musicians. Okay. And we were talking. He was like, you come from the Nina Simone, Roberta Flack family tree. And I was like, hmm. I was like, I see what you did there. And I see how he's connected, like the soulfulness, um, the lyricism that we have, um, you know, the things that we talk about. So I went home and, it, you know, it just festered on my mind. I'm just like, I'm a I'm a different extension of so many different women, whether right. it's Felicia Rashad or, you know, Cicely Tyson or Lauren Hill. So um, I went home and the first song I recorded was Aaliyah because I wanted to talk about being a tomboy, you know, being sexy but dressing in a different way, what sexy looks like for different women. And from there, it was just like ideas just started rolling. Wow. So I said, you know. I'm going to do a song that show all the different pieces of me that also spoke to all my sisters to show that we're not monolith, that we come in a, a beautiful spectrum of differences um, that are all beautiful, but also extended the life and legacies of some of these women that I got to name the song after. Like, you play Whoopi, you got to say Whoopi's name. Love her. Yeah. And then you like, who, and they, if you're young, you might be like, who's Whoopi? So, you know, that's what, that's what I wanted to do. So and, you introduced this new generation right. to... You know, our our Shiro. Yes, yes. Because I thought about it like, I did not know who Nina Simone was. And I'm from North Carolina until I, I became a fan of Lauren Hill. Okay. Because that's one of Lauren's biggest inspirations. So it's like, because of that, I dived into um, Nina and I love her now. So I was like, I'm going to do that for somebody else. You know? That is something <laughs> Okay. All right. This a Feeny song, though? Yes. Ooh. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. ma'am. I've been wanting to do this one for like seven years. Wow. Yeah. Keep Your Head Up by Tupac was one of my favorite, favorite records by him. Um, it made me grow up to be a strong woman, like to remind me like who I am and who I come from. And so, you know, now that I got the chance with this idea, I was like, yo, I got to do something and call it a Feeny. You know what I'm saying? Um, to show that Tupac was who he was, but who he, he was who he was because he was raised by a strong black woman. Right. And if you don't know her name, I want you to know her name. Her name is Afeni Shakur. So. No games. Yeah, no games. No okay. Games played. Yeah. All right. Um, so many things I want to say. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we got to take it to Jermaine Dupree right quick. Okay. Love Jermaine. Yes. He definitely misspoke. Yes. Um, <laughs> clearly, he wasn't aware of a, a, a lot of different women artists that are out here strongly Strong. representing, mm-hmm. you know, being a woman out here, black woman mm-hmm. in America, that has a totally different story from what he actually spoke on. Mm-hmm. So how did you feel when you first heard that comment? Um, it wasn't hate. I just thought, you know, at the time you had a, a opportunity and a platform to shine light on so many different other women, um, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing. Sometimes we talk about, you know, not enough about what we do like and what we want to see, you know, and getting putting people's names out there. So it was just an opportunity to say that, you know, yeah, you have these women um, that are telling their story in their own way, but there are so many other women with so many different stories to tell. And let's take the opportunity to fill that space up by speaking their name, to say a Rhapsody, which I had met him, you know, a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I was on Rap Game to talk about the Kaylee 47. And two, you know, it just reminds us that, you know, we we have to take the opportunity to go dig and find these people. Right. And especially, you know, with someone like Jermaine Dupri, a legend in the game, mm-hmm. who has a platform, like, 
hey, bro, that's some dope women out here. Like, if you got the opportunity and the time, go find them and, you know, maybe groom them, you know, and showcase them to the world. So it was just the opportunity to say, like, you know, we can't we can't put that all on them, like Cardi said. It takes all of us, you know, right. to, to uplift the culture and to bring balance. Because at the end of the day, it's just about balance. I so. think the dopest part about everything is there was a conversation started, that a part. real conversation. Right. And now our eyes are open to, you know, women out here like yes. yourself. Mm -hmm. And we are, you know, going, you know, beyond the radio mm -hmm. to find Fine. what we can connect to, exactly. you know, as women. So I, although he misspoke, I, I just think that it started, started a conversation, conversation that needed to be right. talked about. Right. And that's that's the positive that you get back from it, because even in Cardi's response, she's like, all right, I'm going to take this platform and I'm going to shout them out. Yes. For, you know, and How did just, that feel? Yeah, oh, it felt great. It felt great. Uh, like I say, like I appreciate, you know, what she does with her platform, um, you know, how she, how supportive she is of the sisterhood in the village and of the art, other artists because she doesn't have to. She doesn't owe anybody right. anything. So, you know, it's dope to see someone um, like herself doing that, to see myself doing that, to bring in Cy Rock and Heather Victoria on a tour. Like we all can give a little bit, you know, to the culture, to each other. So it's good to see all of us doing that in our own way. Where does this voice for women come from? Um, this mm -hmm. positive voice, this uplifting mm -hmm. voice, this, you know, this planting a seed in you and watching it, it blossom. Mm -hmm. Where does that voice come from? Were you raised like that? Oh, Is that something that you consciously um, were aware of? Like, mm -hmm. if I do get my chance, like, did you mm -hmm. start out that way? Um, yeah. I, I grew up in a village of strong women. Okay. Um, my mom is one of 13 kids, and she has six sisters, and they're very close. Like So I grew up watching how they loved on each other, how they spoke to each other, how they supported each other, you know, what they expected of us, you know, how I, the relationship I had with my sisters and my girl cousins. Um, and I wanted to see that same thing when I got in the music industry. Like, from afar, I saw it growing up with Lauryn Hill and, you know, um, Missy Elliott and Queen Latifah and MC Light. So... I got in the business, that's what I look for. And it necessarily wasn't there when I got in there. Um, so, you know, my story is I had way more support from men. Okay. Um, so, you know, I said, like, man, when I get the opportunity, I'm going to show love to my sisters to say that, you know, we don't have to fight against each other. There is space for us all. They existed before. It can exist with us now. So we can't fall into the false narrative of what everybody else expects us right. to do. Um, so let's be the change. Like, I wanted to be part of that voice and part of that community. And two, you know, for the ones that's coming up under me, like, what what advice can I give? How can I help you? You know, um, and that's just what it's about because, again, that's how I was raised. And two, going through my own experience, it's like, man, that's what I wished I had more of. Mm -hmm. um, but I did have some, you know, like Rod Digger, you know, she was a big sister to me. Um, Missy Elliott showed love. Um, I just recently, you know, got really connected with Queen Latifah and MC Light. So, you know. It's about whatever they give to me passing it forward. That's uh, what's up. Yeah. All right. Well, I definitely love to hear that. And it's amazing to me. Um, I've been in the industry for quite a long time. And the way that some men can try to pit us against each other, like there can only be one queen. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And we're all queens. Right. And it's a, a strength in numbers right. because if we were able to, you know, be like, oh, they talk about that, and mm -hmm. we're actually able to stick together, we mm -hmm. are everything right, that's, together. That's a whole nother power you don't even want to know about. Like, and as you can see, the more we do that, the more it's good for all of us. Like, that's that's why you have so many dope women coming up because they're we starting to work together more. We speak each other's names. Yeah, we bring each other on tour. So you know, it's just really it's dope. I take the initiative to do that with the younger yeah. uh, females in radio because yes. if you listen to the the guys don't have your same plight. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like right. I have <laughs> have yeah. made the changes in the industry and, you know, yes. like walk these long trails mm -hmm. that you are going to have to go through. So I know from experience and these guys are telling you from the man seat. Right. It's mm -hmm. totally, it's totally different. different. Yeah, I came up on the ninth one in Guru, very supportive, you know, and they, they both tell you they learned a lot in having me about, you know, the difference. But they always say, like, there's only so much that we can tell you because we didn't walk the walk. So when I did connect with Rod Digger and, 
and MC Light and Queen Latifah, they were like, yeah, like, you know, Misha Hilton, like, they can they can prepare you in ways that we can't in different things. So That's a blessing. We got to look out for us all the time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> so, um, all female tour. Yes. Right now. Except for my DJ. Okay. And he's the homie. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, my booking agent, Eve Pierre, she's a black woman. My tour manager, Felicia Bennett, she's a black woman. This one right here with me who's getting my video and audio and document everything, black woman. Um, my homegirl that sells my merch is a black woman. Like Yes, know, merch. Me. Yeah. Misa Hilton, who styles me, is a black woman. Misa so, is everything. Yeah, legend, icon in the game. So, yeah, I got an amazing, a bunch of phenomenal black women surrounding me. I seen that outfit you yeah. had on at Black Girls Rock. Oh, yeah. We had to switch it up all of you. Yeah, I, see, I had to bring my hat out that night, you too. You did that. Thank you, Sergio Hudson. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> yes. Okay, how was that experience? Oh, amazing. I love Black Girls Rock. That's one of my favorite um, organizations, platforms. I tell Beverly, like, anytime you ever need anything, just call me. I'm going to be there no matter what. I don't care. Paid, unpaid, volunteer, I'm always going to show up. Um, because, you know, just what she created in that platform, a, a place for us to come together and celebrate each other, you know, for uh, little girls to be able to learn through us. I do panels with them. Yes. Um, Sometimes I go speak at her uh, summer program for the, for the girls, um, for them to see themselves and for us to be representation, you know, like, it's priceless, you know. Um, that's one of the war shows, like, I try to drop everything for, I, v, uh, I DVR it so I don't miss because it's just so uplifting and it's just good to see us celebrate it in that light. Yes. Shout out to Beverly Bond. It's just, it's, it's really enlightening to talk to you. I could probably talk to you all dang all day long. Oh, it's, but it's just so many different facets of being a woman. woman. Yes. You know, yes. and we do get reduced to being a certain way, like typecast or very whatever. Much, but there's so, you know, mm -hmm. we all like to do different things. So I would definitely like to see in the next year or two, it being more of a variety yes. on the radio. Right. You can't just serve one, one audience. Mm -mm. No, because there's so many stories to tell. Like, uh, one of my, my best friends, GQ, told me, like, we don't live life only on Saturday and Sunday or Friday night in the club. Like, we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we going through all type of emotions. So we need music that represents the soundtracks to our lives. You know, our first kisses, our arguments, if we lost somebody, if we going through depression, if we just want to get up and have a good day, like you need you need music that speaks to everything that you are as a human, you know. So that's why we need a variety. And women bring a whole nother perspective that the guys just yes. can't touch on. Man. Like, come on. So, you know, with every movement, with everything, it doesn't move without women being a part of it. So our voice is necessary. What know? artists are you currently listening to that kind of motivates you? That motivates me. Wow. La Kaylee 47 is one of my favorite artists. Um, I love her a lot. Cy Rock, you know, she lives here. Uh, powerful, powerful um, voice. Um, of course, I'm still listening to Kendrick Lamar. Uh, that's my guy. Big Crit. J.I.D., who's from here. Mariba, she's a singer. Mariba's one of my favorites. Wow. Um, Ari Lennox has an amazing voice. Um, my sister, Heather Victoria. Man, she speak about everything. That girl funny. <laughs> um, you know, but those those are some of the ones that, you know, I keep in rotation. Mm -hmm. What does the word womanism mean to you? Oh, yeah, that's that Alice Walker right there. That um I don't like the the term feminism, feminist, um, because, you know, learning more of the history of what it is, um, that it kind of excluded the black experience, um, and excluded men. I tend to, you know, fall more if I'm going to label myself anything under a womanist. And that's just, you know, loving yourself and having pride for being a woman, a black woman too, but not excluding the men either, you know. It's, I could be, you know, pro-woman and celebrate myself without being anti-anybody anti else. So that's what womanist means to me. You know. When you think of your fans, when mm -hmm. you are recording, okay, what... Is it that you want them to take from your message? From my message? Um, I think the biggest thing is inspiration and purpose and, you know, being okay showing up as you are, um, you know, loving yourself, um, 
knowing that you're, who you are and your story and your experience matters. Um, I think that's part, just reminding us of all those things, who we are, who we came from, what's in our DNA. Um, you know, those those things are what I want to remind people of. And that you're human, yeah. you know, that you're not perfect, that you're going to feel all kind of different emotions and feelings and energies, but, you know, we always have control of it. So. You're essentially raising a generation and re-raising people that did not grow up like yourself. Yeah. Because when you sat up here and talked about your your cousins and your aunts mm-hmm. and your family, I'm like, oh, girl, <laughs> that is not everybody's experience. It's not. It's not what I realized. Um, and that's that's why it's so important to have balance and representation, you know, for those who, you know, need another example, you know, that, that need another blueprint, that need that big sister or that aunt that they don't have in their home that they could turn on the music or open a book or, you know, whatever your way of creating or talk to them, turn on the radio and listen to you talk that they can learn from and gain, you know, just different perspective and new wisdom. So, yeah. Okay, let's do some fun stuff. All right. Can you cook? I could I could follow uh, recipes like a mug. I got like three strong dishes. That's what me. is your favorite dish to cook? Chicken parmesan. Ooh. Yes, that's my favorite one. Chicken parmesan. I want to master my cabbage though, because <laughs> I love cabbage so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And baked mac and cheese. I could I'm good with that one. Oh too. really? Yeah 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 yeah. So you got you got a couple of little one hit of quitters. Yeah, one hit of quitters <laughs> like and and desserts. Now when it comes to dessert, I'm good on that. Banana pudding, that cheesecake, oh. yeah, that strawberry short. Like, I'm, when my mom be like, "Go on and make the dessert." I got you. <laughs> okay, so you so. like one of those? You you got one dish that you contribute to the family holidays? I mean, no, I could do whatever, but I'm a, I'm gonna find a recipe if it ain't one of my mains. But okay. yeah, yeah, I follow recipes very well, and I, you know, we gotta season our own stuff, so we add our own pizzazz. And I haven't had anything where anybody was like, "Nah," they'd be like, "All right." Like, I don't eat seafood, and one time I was like, I want to challenge myself. How to, don't to, you eat seafood? I don't know. I don't like that fishy taste. I don't know. What? But I said, I, I'm going a, I'm to a cook some um, shrimp scampi. I don't eat it. I can't taste it, but I just want to cook it. And it, they, they was popping. It got gone. So I was like, all right, I can follow directions very well. And I could look. I'd be like, it's so like it got enough seasoning on it. So. Oh, my goodness. That's dope. What is something, a talent of yours? Mm-hmm. That one of your that your fans would be surprised to know that you have, other than rapping. Yes, <laughs> um, I I don't think I can. Did you feel like that's your you know you I can, can do it better than anybody else? A talent I could do but other than rapping. Yes, I can't say basketball no more. I got a little sketchy out here. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I could draw a little bit. I can't say I could do it better than anybody else, but I could draw. I, I have a drawing contest with you real quick. Really? Yes. Now that's dope. Yeah, I like to do that. I like to s- sketch and doodle sometimes. Yeah, and people like, oh, I'd be like, yeah, I'm a creative. You know, so can you so. paint? I haven't tried painting, okay. but that's the next thing I want to get into that's is, dope. is learning that, the art of that and photography. Wow, yeah. so you are just a one creative being oh, here. Oh, yeah, I want to do that. I want to write scripts. You know, I want to produce documentaries, like, all the creative things I want to do. And that's it, just what I was about to ask you. Where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? Oh, yeah. I want to start a creative agency, you know, where maybe part of it is record label. Part of it is coming up with marketing ideas for other artists. Because I'm really big into coming up with marketing ideas and advertising and rolling out. Like, that's fun to me. Um, I want to write children's books. I want to get into acting. Like, I just want to do a bunch of things, a bunch of amazing things. Well, you are going to do everything <laughs> with a cherry on top, man. We support <laughs> you 1,000%. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you for being a voice to this generation because there's a lot of misled people out here. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate y'all for supporting it.